Alright guys, so this week fans of the My Hero Academia manga have pretty much been left to starve. But thankfully Season 5 Episode 6, the 94th episode of the anime overall, is here to provide us a good meal. Picking up right where we left off with the last one, we have the second round of battles between Class 1A and Class 1B. And thanks to the tactical know-how of Kendo, Momo's team has just walked right into their trap. One that is overwhelmingly saturated with mushrooms. Now with mushrooms being a fungus, they are very much associated with the concepts of decomposition or death and that sort of thing. And so for many, this may be a scary or uncomfortable presentation. Now in the case of Invisible Girl, with these mushrooms on her, she is no longer as hard to detect. And so that definitely inhibits her quirk. But beyond that, besides the fact of these mushrooms being on these characters, I wouldn't say there's much of a tactical advantage to having all these here. Now there is a vast assortment of different sorts of mushrooms out there, but with this being just a practice fight, all of these mushrooms are non-lethal, and so we're not really seeing the true capabilities or frightening capabilities of She Mage's mushroom quirk. I mean, just make these things poisonous, and that is terrifying. And so if the proper conditions are met, this is a very capable quirk, and I for one really like this character. The mushrooms only last for 2 hours or so, but I can't imagine a situation in which you would need them to last longer than that, especially not in a combative situation. Now something you may notice about this episode is that there is a fair amount of recap. There is a fair amount of going over what is already or has already been established. And for some this may be a bit jarring or off-putting, but I for one have watched One Piece, so yeah, I don't really have that problem. I imagine the studio is attempting to elongate these fights to last the span of the entire episode, and I honestly don't mind it. This is more than likely being done for the sake of ending the season off at a proper point as opposed to being in the midst of a new arc, and so to an extent, it is sort of a necessity. But anyways, Momo's team was ripping at the seams, they were all over the place, and so she would ask for them to regroup. But just then, Class 1B would continue their pursuit in the form of manga. Now, this is certainly one of Horikoshi's wackier character concepts, and his quirk comic gives form to automatopoeia. So words that come from or are associated with sounds are given physical form, and these additionally have abilities based on what they are coming from. And so even though it is a bit goofy, it is very, very capable. The versatility here is definitely major. Not to mention, it scales off of how loud he gets with it. And if you are familiar with our Quirk Evolution series, or hell, any of our theory videos, then you will know how excited I get about these quirks and taking them to that next level. Let me say that this quirk is insane. And for a character like this, I'm not sure whether or not Horikoshi intends to really use them a lot more in the future or not. But man, this is strong because just off of him yelling out loud, he can create words that are the size of entire buildings. And these are big buildings, mind you. These are like skyscraper sized buildings that he is able to then make just off his own voice. So what happens when we put this man up to a megaphone? Suddenly we're dealing with planetary devastation. If Manga says the word zap, he is suddenly more capable with electricity than Kaminari. Oh, and if you're a fan of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, this quirk may seem a bit familiar. And with the use of his quirk, Mongo was able to separate Momo from the rest of her group, which is a major play because there is no question that she is the brains of the operation. Take her off and it's like decapitating their entire team. And Kendo knew this all too well and would not miss this opportunity as she would immediately go in for the attack. Momo is an absolute genius, tactically the only character in the entire series I could imagine could even contest her would be All For One himself. But whereas All For One possesses the power to back up his intellect, Momo on the other hand is a bit lacking in the strength department and so Kendo would not miss this opportunity and would attempt to give her no time to think out a proper countermeasure or strategy. And listen, both of these characters have a whole lot of potential, so I certainly intend to make a quirk evolution for both of them, Kendo and Momo. And listen, in this situation, it was not looking good for Team Momo at all. But Shoto on the sidelines would not lose hope. He would not give up on Momo because he firmly believes in her capabilities. Which was not unfounded because when Momo's back was against the wall, she literally brought out the big guns. 
And listen, something like that suddenly is enough to make the vast majority of characters hesitate at the very least. But switching over to the rest of the team, oh my goodness, Oyama is so useless. He has not done a single thing of merit in this fight whatsoever. He is a complete liability despite the fact that his quirk is a direct counter to that of Shihai's. But going back to Momo, the cannon was obviously just a bluff. She wasn't about to just shoot this girl here. Now, the immediate deduction to be had would be that this was for the sake of blowing a hole in the wall, allowing her an opportunity to escape or flee. But thinking about it rationally, that wouldn't make much sense because at the end of the day, even if she does have a means of escape, Kendo is not going to let up. She is overwhelming her physically, and so she herself is a sort of wall, a barrier for Momo to progress onwards. And so in this desperate situation where she herself had been compromised, she would have to put her faith in her comrades. A care package that Tokoyami would grab and immediately make use of. From here we would have a conversation between She Mage and Vanta Black, and it is very clear that Vanta Black has a sort of crush on She Mage here as he is a bit hesitant and shy, as opposed to what was a bit more of a brazen personality from him prior. And I absolutely love this because it provides depth to these characters that are more so on the back end of things. They're not going to get the same spotlight as your main characters like Deku or Bakugo, but here it feels as though they are alive, that they do have their own goals and ambitions and stuff that are off screen. But this conversation would not last long as Tokoyami was on the hunt. Thanks to Momo's care package, he received a pair of thermal goggles which I feel he should always have because this is very, very useful. They additionally receive some disinfectant spray to keep the mushrooms off of their person, thus allowing Invisible Girl to be, well, invisible properly and assault manga. Tokoyami would then use his super move, Black Ank, to just one shot these two characters in front of him. And with this, he was applying the teachings of Hawks that speed is everything. And again, it's pretty adorable. Vanta Black thought of She Mage's safety before his own here. However, with his cloak, Tokoyami was able to capture Vanta Black in the midst of his quirk usage. Meanwhile, Dark Shadow had She Mage. But when I tell you that I love She Mage, I love this character. She is so adorable, but entirely devious behind that. Oh my goodness. Just as Tokoyami felt as though he had won, She Mage had mushrooms form on his lungs. This is an insta kill quirk. This is absolutely an insta kill quirk. We are so lucky that she decided to be a hero because as a villain, this is just terrifying. If she had intended to do anything beyond just making his breathing difficult, if she had chosen to use a poisonous mushroom in this instance, that is an insta kill without any contact. She doesn't even need to touch this man. She doesn't need to touch him like Shigaraki. She can be distanced and kill. This is scary. And at that, Tokoyami's biggest mistake was not knocking her out. Now, Invisible Girl was just beating the mess out of poor manga over here, but at the end of the day, it's not as if she is a capable combatant hand to hand. So it wasn't as if he was going out in one blow or anything like that. She could not take him out swiftly, and that ended up costing her dearly as Kendo would appear over time. She would simply grip her, and it was over. However, it did take Kendo some time to re-enter the fight as Momo was not going down without one, as she would bind Kendo and hold onto her cannon, so it was a process to bring herself over here. And listen, to lug onto dead weight like this and carry a cannon along with her, Kendo is damn strong. But with that, it was Class 1B's win. To be completely honest with you, I was rooting for Class B here, so I am very happy with the results. From here on out, however, the fights will end up being a whole lot more intense as we do have the heavy hitters of Class 1A, each taking a round of their own. Next up, we have Shoto, which is going to be very, very interesting to see. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and our coverage of it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel with notifications on. And to the anime onlys, if at any point over the course of this season you are tempted to delve into the manga greatness, then you will want to stick around with this channel because when it comes to bringing you some of the best My Hero Academia content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. 
As always, I am Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.